Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,444, part two. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1444, we have this counting problem. And below in the comments, Tobias from the Netherlands had an alternative solution. Now, the setup of the problem is, we have a list of customers, and each customer has been sent coupons to three different stores. Here's the coupon redemption table. So we see that Sue went to public, went to public again, went to Trader Joe's and Wegmans. And over here, we have eight different groups of all the combinations of how the coupons can be used. And we need to count how many customers from this transaction set went to all three. How many from this transaction set went to just these two? Now, we had a cool solution over in 1444, but Tobias had a slightly different take. And in particular, we did eight different logical formulas. And he had a way of creating just a single formula and copying it over and down. Now, we're still going to have to count at any intersecting cell how many transactions involve the particular customer at the head of the row and the particular store. Well, for that, we use the count ifs function. So count ifs, the criteria range, will highlight the entire customer column. Hit F4 to lock it, comma. Criteria, well, for this entire row, I need to look at Sue. When I copy the formula down, though, I need the cell reference to move. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Lock the column, but not the row. So that cell reference is free to move as we copy down, comma. Criteria range two, we need to look at the store column, F4. Comma And the criteria, we're looking at the item at the top of the column. As we copy it across the columns, the K needs to be free to move. But as we copy it down, that 8 needs to be locked. So I hit the F4 key once and twice. Close parentheses. Now, this is the formula we used in our last video. If I Control Enter, copy it over and down, we get our count. At this point, Tobias said, well, guess what? Since the if function interprets any non-zero number as true and zero as false, we can use the if function here to populate all of these cells, not with numbers, but with the names of the stores. That way, since this person went to all three, if we had Wegmans Public and Trader Joe's, over here in this column, we could simply compare it against each one of the items at the top of the column. When we go over to this column, we can compare it to these items. So you ready? F2. And before count ifs, I type in if, tab, logical test. Well, there it is, count ifs. Any non-zero number is true, zero is false, comma. Well, what do we want if it comes out true? We want store name. I hit the F4 key once and twice. Otherwise, comma, we want double quote, double quote. That's a zero length text string that will show nothing. Close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it to the side, double click and send it down. Now notice, now for any cell in this first row or anywhere in this range, I can simply compare that list for that customer to whatever list is at the head of this column. Equal sign, I'm going to highlight all three cells for this customer. And I need this locked as I copy to the side, but free to move as I copy down. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the column, but not the row. And I want to say, are any of you equal to? Now, if I highlight a row and a column, the resulting array would be a 3 by 3 table. Now, if I hit the F9 key, that's not what we want. Control Z, we really want these three names to also be in a row. So actually, before I do anything, I'm going to highlight that and, and F4 to lock it. Well, what do we do if we want to take items in the row and spread them out across the columns? We use the transpose function. 
Now if I close parentheses, now if I click at the end and F9, there we go. That is beautiful. Now in the last video, we used the AND function in every single column, except, I think except for the last one. Well, here we're checking to see if all the items at the head of the column are equal to the row items. So we're always looking for three trues. Control Z, well, we simply put that in the AND function. Now this is an array operation right here. If I come to the end and enter it, it's not going to give me an answer. Value error means you forgot the special keystroke for array formulas, F2. Now before we enter this, of course, whenever there's three trues inside of AND, AND will deliver a true to the cell. Anytime there's any combination of trues and falses, meaning they're not all true, and will deliver a false. Since this is an array formula that requires the special keystroke, we have to hold Control Shift and Enter. Notice as soon as we do Control Shift Enter, we have to look up into the formula bar and verify that our curly brackets have been put in. Now I'm going to copy it to the side and then down. Go to the last cell and hit F2 to verify that all of the cell references are working, and they're not. We have to fix this. Come back to the upper left corner, F2. Click inside Transpose. Click on Array. And now I need to lock this one as I copy down, but let it move as it copies to the side. So I hit the F4 key once. And now I have Row Lock, but not Column. Control-Shift-Enter. Copy it to the side, double click, and send it down. Now I go to the last cell in F2. Sure enough, the cell references are working. Now we have our columns of trues and falses, and we're interested in true, so we simply want to count them using the count ifs function. I'm going to highlight the entire range as a relative cell reference, comma, and then type true, close parentheses, control, enter. Copy to the side. Whoops, one too many. And there we go. We get the same count as last video. I better check the last one, F2. That is looking good. It's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Tobias for this great alternative solution. We'll see you next video.